Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Dragon Barrow. Dragon Barrow is balanced for characters of 5th level, though characters of 4th level can survive this quest if they are cautious and rest between encounters. Characters of 6th level or higher should have no trouble plundering the barrow and surviving its challenges. Location Overview Lady Tanamir Alagonda was a royal scion of Neverwinter more than a century ago. Along with two parties of adventurers, she fought and killed Azdraka, a green dragon that had long terrorized the High Road. Lady Alagonda died in battle and was laid to rest beneath a barrow near where the dragon fell. The remains of her fallen compatriots and the corpse of Azdraka were sealed in the burrow with her, in accordance with Lady Alagonda's dying wishes. Quest Goals To complete the Dragon Barrow quest, the adventurers must retrieve Lady Alagonda's Dragon Slayer Longsword, which according to legend, was buried with her. Travel to the Barrow The Barrow is roughly 40 miles northwest of Phandalin, amid the rolling hills and grasslands, between the High Road and Neverwinter Wood. Since the characters can travel roughly 24 miles in a day, they should expect to take one long rest in the wilderness before arriving at the Barrow on the second day of their trek. A cold wind blowing from the coast assails them for most of the trip, bringing occasional rain. Centre of Attention after being driven from his home in Neverwinter Wood by marauding orcs, Xanth the Centaur has taken refuge in the hills around the barrow. When he spots the characters, Xanth approaches peacefully and shares the following warnings. Strange witch lights hover over Dragon Burrow at night. The hill is haunted by restless spirits of the dead. Neverwinter Wood has become overrun with orcs in league with half-orc spellcasters. Deep in the forest atop a cave-riddled hill is a circle of standing stones where the evil half-orcs perform their dark rites. Xanth avoids Dragon Barrow and would like to see the evil half-orc spellcasters of Neverwinter Wood driven off or killed. He offers to guide the characters to the Circle of Thunder if they wish to take on the half-orcs there, and is willing to wait until the characters are done exploring the barrow. The Circle of Thunder is roughly 40 miles away, deep within the forest. Catacomb Features A series of chambers and tunnels at ground level form the catacombs beneath the barrow mound. They reek of damp earth and stale, deathly air. Ceilings Ceilings throughout are 8 feet high and flat. Earthen construction. All tunnels and rooms have walls, floors, and roofs made of packed earth. Light. There is no light within the barrow. Adventurers require dark vision or their own light source to see inside. Sarcophagi. The sarcophagi found throughout the catacombs are carved from solid blocks of granite and sealed with heavy granite lids. The seals are airtight. Lifting a lid requires a successful DC-20 strength athletics check. Each lid is a medium object with an armor class of 17, 12 hit points, and immunity to poison and psychic damage. Arrival When the adventurers come within sight of the barrow, describe the following. A 30-foot high hill rises ahead of you. It's top too flat to be a natural occurrence. Jutting from the grassy hilltop is a row of ten-foot-tall bone-white rocks that arc towards the stormy sky like outstretched talons. Characters who climb the top of the barrow and survey it notice its distinctive dragon-like shape with a successful DC-10 wisdom insight check. The pale rocks resemble spines protruding from the dragon's back. At night, the Will-O-Wisps in Area D2 emerge from the hill using their incorporeal movement and float above the barrow, hoping to attract prey with their lights. If they detect characters nearby, the Will-O-Wisps turn invisible and withdraw into the barrow. Barrow Locations The following locations are key to the map of Dragon Barrow. Area D1 Secret Entrance One of the white rocks atop the hill 
acts as a stone plug embedded into the earth. Characters searching the hilltop can spot an opening beneath the base of the rock with a successful DC-10 wisdom perception check. By lashing ropes around the top of the rock, the characters can topple it with a successful DC-19 strength athletics check. A knock spell also causes it to topple over. The opening beneath the rock reveals a two-foot wide spiral staircase with flagstone steps descending 30 feet to Area D2. Area D2 Willow Wisps The tunnels around the spiral staircase are haunted by three willow wisps. The wisps are invisible until they hear intruders coming down the stairs, whereupon they illuminate and move to the far side of the three concealed pit traps in Area D3, hoping to lure intruders to their doom. Each wisp has its own pit and attacks any character who falls into it. A wisp reduced to 7 hit points or fewer turns invisible on its next turn and flees to hide until the characters leave the barrow. Area D3 Concealed Pit Traps Each of these pits is 5 feet wide, 10 feet deep, and dug out of the earth. Rows of rusty swords are embedded into the floor of each pit, whose tops are covered by rotten wooden planks hidden under a thin layer of earth. A creature using a pole or similar tool to prod ahead detects the pits with a successful DC-10 wisdom perception check. Any character that steps into a pit falls into it, taking 1d6 bludgeoning damage and impaling itself on 1d4 swords, each of which deals 1d6 piercing damage. Area D4 Skeletal Surprise The bones and rotting saddle of Lady Alagonda's horse lie in the southern niche of this cavern. When a creature approaches within 5 feet of the bones, they knit together and rise as a skeletal horse. This steed has the statistics of a riding horse, except that it's undead. It bonds with any character who wants to ride it. Area D5 The Narrow Tunnel This tunnel is 2 feet wide. At the halfway point, a 5 foot long pressure plate is hidden under a 2 inch thick layer of dirt. A character prodding ahead with a pole or similar tool can detect the plate with a successful DC-10 wisdom perception check. The first character to step on the plate causes the walls of the tunnel to collapse inwards, burying all creatures in the tunnel. A buried creature is blind and restrained, has total cover against attacks, and begins to suffocate when it runs out of breath, as described in the suffocation section of the rulebook. Only a creature that is not trapped in the tunnel can clear away the collapse, using an action to open up the 5 foot deep section of tunnel closest to it. A creature in that space is no longer buried. Area D6 False Tomb Two sealed stone sarcophagi rest in alcoves dug into the south wall here. Each sarcophagus releases a cloud of corrosive dust when opened, filling the 10 foot by 10 foot area north of the sarcophagus. Any creature in the area must make a DC-15 dexterity saving throw, taking 14 or 4d6 acid damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. The cloud then disappears. The sarcophagi contain nothing of interest. Area D7 Adventurer's Sepulcher Four sarcophagi in alcoves contain the moldy bones of adventurers, a bard, a cleric, a fighter, and a wizard who perished fighting as Draka. Treasure. The northwest sarcophagus contains the dead bard, who was buried with a loot of illusions. Sealed within the dead wizard, in the southeast sarcophagus, is a necklace of fireballs. If the characters acquire and identify these magic items, give them the loot of illusions and necklace of fireball cards, or they can reference them in the magic items listing. Area D8 Dragon Slayer Two sarcophagi in alcoves containing the mouldy bones and rusty armour of Tanamir Alagonda and her faithful squire, but hold nothing of value. The area north of the sarcophagi has the bones of Azdraka, a huge dragon, embedded in its walls. The dragon's skull rests on the floor 
and has a long sword set atop it. Treasure. The sword is Lady Alagonda's Dragon Slayer. Give the Dragon Slayer card to whoever takes it, or they can reference it in the magic items listing. If the sword is taken, an invisible stalker appears and attacks anyone in this area until the sword is put back, or until the guardian is destroyed. 